I'm going to show you an unboxing, first print, from my personal thoughts on the CTC Riverside 3D printer. This is CTC's second attempt at producing an SLA printer, the first being a blatant rip-off of the Form Labs Form 1, even running their firmware and the slicer software preform. I'm guessing they were threatened with legal action because they've since released the newer Riverside. This has a new redesigned case, its own firmware and ships with a custom version of Cura. On first inspection, it seems quite well packaged. However, it soon becomes apparent that the resin bottle has leaked and it was actually taped up with black electrical tape around the threads. The resin tray has no protective film on the underside. It seemed to be scratched slightly and seemed to have fingerprints all over it. It comes with a UK power lead. It was fitted with a 13 amp fuse. Given the power supply is only rated at 200 watts, I needed to fit a 3 amp fuse for safety's sake. They give you a metal scraper. It's not bad quality. Power supplies are switching 200 watt power supply. The unit is wrapped rather good, lots of cling film and corner protection. It's a shame that it had resin all over it from the leak bottle. Whilst the machine itself no doubt was brand new, I've got a feeling that some of the supplied accessories were put in there from return machines. There's quite a lot of cling film, a lot of cling film, in fact to be honest, probably too much cling film. The top is made from shiny plastic and fits the unit very well. They no longer have the cover hinged like on their first attempt, which was more like the Form 1, and moreover you can't adapt it to hinge either, 
because they've changed the actual size of the printer you couldn't fit a hinge and pull the cover off it's a straight up and straight down so you're going to need the coverage at the top uh, or of course you could probably cut a big hole in the back so you could slide it on and slide it off but uh, I'm not going to bother doing that Uh, included is a wash off tub and inside this wash off tub is the USB lead it's a good quality USB lead it's not rubbish CTC have included a level board now this is something that Form 1 never did and you can basically adjust the uh, the height of the platform with that level board which is an ingenious way of, of, of doing it the instructions are in broken English and you'll find that they're actually wrong and following them simply adds hours and hours and hours to your initial setup here you can see exactly what you get in the box from the USB lead to a burn CD uh, having the drivers and curer, the wash off tin, the power supply, the resin tray, the resin, the scraper and the lead. The new design of the Riverside's actually not bad. It, it, it looks really, really nice. Uh, one of the problems that I've come across though, or what I think will be a problem, is the gap between the resin tray uh, mechanism and the case. As you can see, it's, it, it's got a massive gap. I'm th thinking dust will get down in there. Uh, also, just below that flange is the switch that uh, is supposed to shut the machine off should you remove the protective cover allowing your eyes to uh, to get the laser radiation that's been uh, glued up so um, it operates with or without the cover which may not be a good thing Now on the forums they'll tell you that that main mirror deep inside the machine is critical and you only need a small speck of dust on it to ruin your print. As you can see this one was filthy but seeing as it was brand new I figured well I'll not mess with it because I don't really know how de delicate and fragile it is so I left it be to do my first print. The software that's burned on the CD Cura only works with Windows. Now I'm a Mac guy myself so I had to copy the software onto a SD card and this is pretty much the only Windows machine I've got it's a very old Intel Atom netbook but I was able to install the software and the drivers and do my first print on it so it was all good. So the install installed the drivers and cure. The setup was quite simple and worked first time. You can see here the startup procedure. So when you first turn the machine on, it actually goes through a tilting procedure. Uh, 
presumably to just stir up the, the, the resin and then after it's done that it's actually ready to receive instructions from the computer. Uh, this is CTC's build platform, they call it the sucker for some strange reason and that's where the print sticks to after you've uh, made it. It actually hangs upside down and is slowly drawn out of the vat of resin. As you can see it's got crisscrosses on it to help the print stick and when it's properly set up it really does stick well. There's another shot of that mirror. You can actually see that there's hairs on it and dust particles. Although at the time I didn't think it was that critical. After all it's brand new. Yeah, you know. Okay, so here we go with the very first print. As you can see I've got the little netbook. I've put the, um, the Ultimaker robot that you get with Cura on the build platform. I haven't changed any of the settings. I've simply told it to slice it, dice it, and print it. Really was as simple as that. Now I'm not sure how safe it is without the cover on. And I rather like my eyes. After all, my mummy gave them to me. So I decide I'm going to fit the uh, the lid on, you know. Better be safe than sorry. But it does adequately show you the peel process where the tank drops down to um, release the print from the silicone coating on the tray. And then it fires the laser again, puts another layer on, then it'll do the peel process again. And that's how it pretty much works. This is a close-up of the LCD to its Riverside, what layer it's printing and how long it's been printed for. It doesn't tell you how long you've got to go. It doesn't tell you anything other than that, which is, you know, pretty useless. This is what Cura tells you. Just about all the information on there is inaccurate. It was all designed for fused filament type of printers, so it doesn't take four hours, it doesn't use 6.85 meters, and it doesn't weigh seven grams. And um, the print took about one and a half hours and produced absolutely bugger all. That's what I got off it. I ended up having to scrape the, uh, the print off the tray and this was simply because I hadn't adjusted the platform height correctly. I followed the instructions which were totally wrong. What they said to do wasn't the correct way to do it at all. After I did fix it, this is what I got. So once I got it to stick to the build platform, as you can see it started to produce a mess. Really really bad. Looked really really bad. Was really really bad. It turned out I needed to clean the mirror. Uh, I had two failed prints like this. I cleaned the mirror and I also uh, tightened up the build platform which plate which was a little bit wobbly. And after I'd done that I got an absolute fantastic cracking prints ever since. Uh, as you can see there's the, uh, the Automaker robot and the two failed prints uh, at the side of it. So, what do I think of the CTC Riverside? Well, for 580 quid, it's less than one third the price of the Form 1, the printer that it's based on. 
The specifications are exactly the same, so I'm not going to go into them. All you need to do is look it up on the internet. There's loads of websites with it. One of the problems is, is it does lack the software support. The Cura software that's supplied is horrible. It's got to be the worst slicing software I've ever used. It's, it's, it's really bad. That said, I found that using programs like Mesh Mixer to create your trees and branch support, which is pretty much vital for an SLA printing machine, and then you import that model back into Cura and use Cura as nothing more than a basic slicer and print, it's, it's actually okay. It's an extra step, it's a bit clunky, but like I said, this machine is one third the price. Reliability? Well, that's an unknown. Uh, the Form 1 is full of issues from lasers dying early, and Form Labs produced the Form 1 Plus, which was uh, an upgraded version, supposedly with a better laser. And if you go on the forums, you can see that uh, those lasers are bad from the factory, giving print issues. You know, there's quite a few issues with them. So if that's anything to go by, you can expect a few problems. Not a fault of CTC, because basically what they've done, they've looked at, at, at their machine, you know, Form 1s, um, they've pretty much copied it and changed things to, uh, to allow them not to be sued, I guess. Uh, CTC, they say it's guaranteed for a year. I don't know how good that promise is. For what it's worth, I bought my other printers from a, a person called Print Chain Store which claimed to be uh, a representative of CTC themselves. They did honour a warranty uh, claim and they did send me some cables. When I went back to buy this printer from them, I found out that they'd banned me and I was no longer able to buy anything from them. Uh, I'm not too bothered because, you know, there's a thousand sellers and they're probably all the same guy anyway, under different uh, emails. I mean, if you look at some of the emails from some of these Chinese sellers, they really are stupid emails. Pretty much made up. Um, but this guy, like I said, I did buy it. They did send it to me. The support so far has been okay. They've answered all my questions. So, uh, also, unlike the Form 1, this printer doesn't have any internal memory at all. The SD card's actually missing off the main board. So it means that whilst you're printing, you've got to have the printer turned on and attached. Which is okay, provided it's not a 15 hour print, I suppose. So, to summarise. I like this printer. The Form 1 is simply too much money for what you get. The CTC brings SLA printing to the masses. The more people who own it, Will only drive down the price of the consumables like the resins and such and that can only be a good thing and you can buy spares for these printers you do need to email ctc directly or your seller on ebay they don't seem equipped with any form of web shop where you can just go and click and, and order your consumables you've actually got to email them and ask them if they sell them and how much they are which is a bit of a, a bit of a pain but there you have it. The CTC gets a solid thumbs up from me. If you've got one or you've got a different opinion, please leave comments below. Post a video response if you like. I'd really like some interaction with you guys. Cheers.